my name is madhavan okay madhavan yeah. yeah good i'm very happy that you switch on your cam so that we can see you yes sir so uh, i'm do i'm doing a phd uh, from jawaharlal nehru university mm -hmm. um, center for french and francophone studies so i would like to paper, i would like to present a paper on uh, translation studies in the uh, in from french to tamil okay so uh, shall i start uh, with my paper uh, shall i uh, present my screen yeah okay. the organizers uh, this gentleman wants to present a ppt i hope i am audible and somebody yes. from the organizing team is connected yes, sir, with us you can present it no problem yeah you you can do that no yes. problem yes uh, uh, my is my uh, screen is it uh, yeah, it's visible. Up? yeah it's visible okay and dear madhavan and i'm really really sorry for this interruption at the beginning of your presentation you see that it's already 5 6 so keep yes. in your mind that we have limited time and you have to sum up your uh, presentation in the given time all right yes sir hmm. all right best of luck yeah please go ahead yes is my ppt present on the screen yeah yeah it's, it's visible please go ahead okay 20 my paper is uh, 21st century french to uh, french tamil literary translation an overview of text choice i'm going directly to the subject research carried out in this area have shown that there is a uh, that french uh, translation of french uh, works French uh, French literary works has a strong influence uh, in Tamil language, either directly or indirectly. A number of research works carried out in this field uh, have shown that this these translations can be split into two categories. Uh, the the translations done uh, prior to 1980 are called indirect translations, or we can call it as uh, early translations. So uh, these uh, in this period, these uh, translations were mostly classical texts. Uh, novel and uh, play were the genres of uh, uh, choice, and the techniques the translators followed uh, techniques as adaptation, recreate, recreation. And when we talk about the modern period, which is in uh, post 1980, their uh, translations uh, were uh, done through uh, uh, directly from French. So um, when I mean uh, the earlier early translations were done through uh, from uh, through English, and the later ones, uh, post 1980, uh, were done from uh, directly from French. These are the key points which we have to note. It the next point, which is uh, in the recent time, um, uh, in in post 1980, the translations were uh, were basic were were basically classical and contemporary contemporary works. Novel and short story were uh, the chosen genres or the translated genre, and these the contemporary the modern translators followed uh, many uh, latest techniques, uh, which render to be faithful to the text, and they give more visibility to the author as well as to the to his style of writing. And let's uh, look at the list of uh, modern translators. These are the famous uh, translators. The first two are uh, the pioneers of this uh, modern era, uh, V. Sri Ram, uh, S. Madana Kalyani, uh, and later, uh, later, uh, later, uh, the other translators are R. Krishnamurti, Nagaratnam Krishna, S. Venkata Subrahi Nayakar, Kumaran Valavan, and others. S. Uh, S. A. Venkata Subrahi Nayakar is uh, is been uh, translating uh, so much in this twenty uh, first century. Next, uh, when we talk about our research paper, um, yeah, this paper, um, the present study takes into account only direct translations from French published uh, in between 1982 to uh, uh, 2020. In this context, we can observe that 21st century has been witnessing with an increase in the number of uh, translations as well as with uh, with uh, with the that of uh, direct translators these translators choose a variety of works through uh, which they deliver social cultural philosophical and political messages to the target society therefore there is politics involved in the choice of works taken up for translation politics here means the history and relation of powers and its games through translated works 
our attempts uh, uh, in this through uh, this paper tries to discuss the external and internal factors influencing their choice of a text the hypothesis is about to test whether ideology of translators guides the choice of text in the translation in the tamil translation of a french text in order to do uh, to do so we have divided this paper into three sections the first uh, first one uh, deals with the support mechanism for promoting translation works so, uh, the second uh, talks about the role of awards and recognition in text selection and the last one uh, explores the relevance of a source text um, relevance of source text uh, to the target society uh, uh, it this concludes uh, it this concludes with a uh, closes with a conclusion next next section yes this um, in, I mean, in the first section, unlike the early translations, most of these uh, uh, most of the translations published post 1980 have been made with the support of French agencies or uh, uh, French institutes, uh, such as uh, uh, French Institute of Paris in France, Embassy of France uh, in India. Here I provide a list of books which have been translated, uh, which have been funded uh, by the French government uh, or French agencies. So in this list, we can see um, on on basis of this data, I, uh, we can notice there are 23 uh, funded works have been published uh, from 1980 to 2020, uh, in which Vais Sriram, uh, along with uh, Kriya publishers, occupy first position uh, in publishing high number of projects. Novel and essay are the most chosen genres. Most of these works have been published in 2000, so besides, Besides, there has been an increase in the number of direct translators. Overall, a great number of uh, translations are produced in the recent times and are constantly on the rise. Hence, 21st century shows a prosperous period as far as translation, uh, as far as Tamil translation of French works, modern translators and Indian publishers are concerned. And in, uh, let's move on to the next uh, section. Here, uh, in the post 1980 scenario almost all the books translated have won awards or an awards or distinctions for example albert camus uh, and Lesio have won nobel prizes in literature uh, and and then we can see um saint exuberi uh, hina salim and kamal Dal and others uh, have uh, have uh, been awarded with prestigious literary prizes and uh, and uh, and lastly, we have uh, the um, we have a uh, literary giants. Um, these are the Victor Hugo, Honor Balzac. Their works have been uh, considered as a as a national as a French national patrimony. They have been awarded with the uh, French uh, Legion of Honor. To sum up, almost all French works which were chosen for translations are famous, recognized, best-selling, or award winners. In this regard, literary prices and recognition of source texts remain one of the main criteria for text selection. And lastly, uh, uh, we will see uh, the theme, the themes of source texts and their relevance to the target society. Various social, political, and cultural factors influence the uh, translator's choice. For instance, capital punishment is a legal penalty in India. Uh, as per the recent report, around 140 uh, death sentences were awarded in 2021. There have been many voices in the campaign to abolish it. In this situation, Kumaran Balavan, a modern translator, uh, takes part in this movement by introducing Victor Hugo's last day of a condemned man in Tamil. It deals with the capital punishment and the psychology of a uh, of a condemned man. So by introducing uh, this novel, this novel is uh, inspired a movement for the abolition of capital, uh, capital punishment in the French society. Translator agrees with the author, uh, author um, that Death penalty is brutal and inhuman, and therefore needs to be abolished. The voice, uh, the choice, is also influenced by the political milieu of the receiving culture. For the translator, states in his postscript, I'm reading his uh, 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 an extract uh, given in the in his uh, translation postscript. When Afsal Guru, he is a Kashmiri uh, separatist, convicted for his role in the 2001 Indian Parliament attack. 
uh, when Afsal Guru was executed, the so-called in democratic Indian government failed to inform and hand over his body to his family members, which was seen as a humiliating act in the world stage. Through the above citation, uh, it is evident that uh, that a translator is not only uh, translating an ideological text but also introducing his own ideology into his or her translation here ideology of translation refers to the basic orientation chosen by the translator operating within the tamil social and cultural context similarly um, Similarly, uh, the translation of a Hina Salim, so we can say other 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 works which have been published in the modern era, modern times. The translation of a Hina uh, Inna Salim's uh, My Father's Rifle reminds Tamil readers uh, of the question of identity, freedom, and the Sri Lankan civil war. The translation of uh, Michel Ferrier, Ferrier's Fukushima, brings to readers memories of the devastated shorelines of Tamil Nadu and the sufferings of the 2004 uh, Indian. Ocean uh, tsunami survivors. In this regard, in the present century, the choice of a French uh, choice of French uh, text in Tamil literature is more ideological, political than social and cultural. Also, uh, also we uh, also uh, we can see some texts uh, chosen for its philosophy, liter uh, literary values, and canonical uh, writings. For example, the theory of uh, the theory and concept of existentialism were introduced in real terms to Tamil readers through French. Way Stadam's translation stand witness to this fact, and for this reason, he has been called uh, as Kamudasan. On the other hand. S. Yes, uh, Madana Kalyani is focused with a, speci uh, with a specific mission, uh, namely to introduce a representative work uh, uh, for the uh, literary movements in French literature. Classism, uh, such as classism, existentialism, absurdism, romanticism, etc. All these translations stand witness to this fact. Both translators, uh, both trans, uh, translators uh, have evolved to become the pioneers of this new trend in the 21st century. As a conclusion, the 21st century is a prosperous period as far as the tran Tamil translation from French is concerned. This paper attempts to analyze the contemporary uh, translators' works in the light of uh, uh, in the light of politics of translation. Politics here. Um, uh, Politics, he is at work from the choice of text for translating. Firstly, texts are translated with the support uh, with the support and sponsorship from French institutions. Secondly, almost all the all the books chosen for translation are award-winning books. Thirdly, the choice of text depends on the social, political, historical, and cultural context in which these translations are produced. In view of these uh, above arguments, we agree that uh, we agree with our uh, with our hypothesis, ideology of translators guides the choice of text in the Tamil translation of French text. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Madhun. Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation on French Tamil translation studies. Uh, I am sure that a number of people, you know, that all those who have joined us have learned a lot from your presentation. Uh, I'll share my comments on your presentation towards the end of this session. And uh, I'm sure that uh, some of our participants have some questions, but I think that we'll have one question answer session, one common question answer set in, uh, session towards the end of this presentation. So without wasting our time, uh, let's uh, proceed. Now I call upon our. Uh, thank you, sir. Mm. Yeah, thank you. But thank please you. stay connected. Don't leave this meeting. Huh? Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sir. yeah thank you. So now we have. Uh, uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. It's uh, Kurumo, research scholar from Department of History and Archaeology, Nagaland University. And uh, uh, the participant is to present a uh, paper on cultural homogeneity of the Tenemia community. Is is the scholar with us? Yes, sir. Excuse All right. Me? Yeah. yeah. Excuse me. Am I yeah. audible? Yes, you are audible. Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, good uh, good evening, sir. This is Dr. Pooja Malik. Uh, yeah. Can I know about my turn for the paper presentation? You Actually, see, Peter, Peter, yeah, you were at number one. You were, and we called upon you, but you were not connected with us at that point in time. Uh, would you like to give your presentation right away, or uh, if you have patience, you can wait for some time, and we can ask you to give your presentation towards the end of this session. So, what do you want? I can give right away if there is no problem. But you'll have to, you know, that remain connected with us. 
Yes, yes, I'm connected now. All right. So uh, I'm sorry. I hope the uh, the participant from Nagaland University uh, doesn't have any objection to it. Objection? I can wait a moment. You so please let I me know. You, I you... can wait. All right. Uh, all right. Then uh, uh, let's uh, come to Pooja. Pooja, yes. Uh, you uh, please introduce yourself and share your uh, uh, title of presentation. Okay. Yeah. And if you don't mind, you can switch on your cam. Uh, okay. Yeah. Is it okay now? Yeah, that's fine. Dr. Pooja is to present her paper on the pattern of cultural shift in Manju Kapoor's difficult daughters. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, can I present my paper without sharing my PPT? Yeah, that's all right. You know that if you want to read out, you can go ahead with that. We don't have any problem. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, my name is Dr. Pooja Malik, and I am assistant professor in English department, MIT University, Haryana, where I have been teaching since last six years, and I teach communication skills and English literature for UG and PG classes. The paper which I'm going to present, the title of the paper is The Pattern of Cultural Shift in Manju Kapoor's Difficult Daughters. Uh, first, I would like to introduce about the author. Manju Kapoor was born in 1948 in Amritsar. She has worked as a professor of English literature at Miranda House College, Delhi. She is the author of six novels. First novel is Difficult Daughters. For this, she won the Commonwealth Prize and was a number of bestsellers in India. Her second novel, A Married Woman, came in, came in 2003. Then her third novel, Home, came in 2006, which is a uh, which is a good example of gender discrimination in our society. Then our uh, fourth novel is The Immigrant. It came in 2008 and it was listed for the DSC Prize for South Asian Literature. Her fifth novel was Custody and the last novel came in 2016, Brothers. Uh, the research paper. This research paper is oriented on Indian feminism and Manju Kapoor's first novel, Difficult Daughters, has been taken for the analysis which reveals that Difficult Daughters shows a crystal clear cultural shift in traditional Indian society through the characters of Kasturi, Virmati and Ida. Though the protagonist of this novel is Virmati, Yet her mother Kasturi and her daughter Ida have a great importance in order to understand drastic change in society during the time of these three characters. This change is quite relevant in today's scenario also, which we will be discussing through the character of Ida. In the novel, Kasturi appears before us as a mother of 11 children. Her married life was just a starting of breeding for her, which continued for more than the half of her life. Even she started to take her motherhood as a curse and began to pray for her death. Still, she never thinks of raising any question against this destiny decided for her by the male-dominated society where she had no control over her power of generating. Virmati, the daughter of Kasturi, is the eldest one with her 10 siblings. Her life is another name of responsibilities, while Kasturi is always dumb in her life. On the contrary, Virmati has a lot to say about her desires and dreams. Moreover, she marries a person of her own choice who was a professor and his name is Harish in the novel. This was a second marriage of Harish, but Virmati married Harish as per purely of her own choice without caring for the rules set by the society for her daughter. She takes part actively in the freedom struggle of India and during partition, also she becomes a part of social upheaval rather than just being a mute witness or victim. Now the third character who shows the change in the society is the daughter of Virmati. She is Ida. Ida is far ahead from the character of Virmati. She is the representative of modern generation who believes to break the relation rather than to continue it as a burden in case of dissatisfaction. As she was treated by her husband just as a commodity, she refused to live like this and she broke the relation with her husband. 
though she gets her child aborted under the pressure pressure of her husband but she gets divorced also after it she is ready to live her life without husband and without children and she is much satisfied at the other hand she wants to know the mystery of her mother's life as her mother never opened to her but she wanted to know about her and she wants to feel what she had been living in her life the pattern of cultural shift can be seen in these three characters of difficult daughters where kasturi lives her life just as a burden without any hope of change or any struggle virmati tries to live as per her own desires but unfortunately she could not succeed in this thoroughly because she married to harish but in her life she could not get the status of a uh, first wife or the respect which was uh, given to ganga the first wife of harish she had to struggle throughout her life to get the same status as ganga had but she could not get complete satisfaction in her relation with harish yet she continued in this relation till the end of her life yet her struggle though she did not uh, succeed in her struggle yet her struggle was uh, not worthy the next character the daughter of virmati she is ida she is the representative of modern generation takes the decisions of her own life on her own and follows that without any regret whatever she decides she doesn't blame anyone for that and takes the full responsibility of her decisions here we see that there is a well designed pattern of cultural shift in women of indian society which is considered to be a closed one in indian society it is very difficult to think in today's time even that a girl decides to live her life as per her own terms and conditions but we can see a change through the character of kasturi virmati and ida kasturi she did not say a single word in her life against the wrong done to her and virmati she objected against the things which happened to her but she could not get success succeed as she adopted to live uh, to keep quiet at a certain point of her life then it was the character of ida who never adjusted in her life against any wrong done to her so this was the end of this presentation uh, is there any you. question yeah thank you dr puja i am sure that there will be some questions but we will go ahead with the the question answer session towards the end of this uh, you know uh, session so i hope you don't have any problem so please stay connected with us now let's uh, uh, proceed and uh, the next speaker is the uh, miss uh, kuru mohu you see that uh, at uh, at this point in time it's very important to tell you that it depends upon a person's culture how his or her name should be pronounced and please uh, uh, you know uh, uh, my apologies if i mispronounce your name uh, could you please give me your uh, could you please introduce yourself and uh, uh, then go ahead with your presentation Hello, sir. Am Hello. I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Very good. Uh, good evening to all. I am yeah. Madam Mukro Mohanjiti, scholar from Nalan University, History and Archaeological Department, Kohima Campus. Sir, indeed, it's my immense pleasure to have me here, and I extend my sincere gratitude to the organizing committee as well. The title of my topic is Cultural Homogeneity of the Tanime. I would like I would like to I would like to present through the slide. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, please go ahead. The organizers Hello, the sir? participant wants to the organizers, I hope that you're connected with us. The participant wants to present a PPT. Yes, sir. We are connected. They can proceed. Yeah, you are connected. You are connected. Yes, sir. We are connected. Yes. Hello, yeah, sir. You, you yes. Can, yeah, you can share your share your screen. The topic of my presentation is cultural homogeneity of the Tanime community. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for this interruption. I couldn't understand what you said. 
do you want to present a ppt or do you want uh, to you know uh, keep your cam off do you want to keep your cam off what have you uh, said you know i can uh, sir i want to yeah i want to uh, present in this manner with the slides all right okay okay go yeah. ahead go ahead please so the title of my presentation is cultural homogeneity of the tenemi to begin with let me briefly introduce who are called the tenemi tenemi is an ethnic group belonging to the naga race the word teni is derived from teni numi meaning people who wear skilled it consists of nine tribes officially namely angami anals chakasant umai zelieng rongmai rengma and puchuri there are five distinct traditional culture sala headdressed kesani black kilt karu village gate tekukatsu there is cultivation and kenne wrestling Tenemi are known for their cultural impact and protecting traditional culture. Their social etiquette help to learn, adapt, exchange, and promote social relationship. These cultural values are still in practice. Meaning of Tenemi cultural hom homogeneity. Tenemi cultural homogeneity is an impressive and typical culture. It defines the role of cultural hegemony in social and economic milieu, enlightened qualities of social events in merrymaking and constructive criticism. It is a culture with uniform pattern, with uniform pattern, provide common background, core identity, promoting togetherness to conserve social etiquette. and positivity is a core value of the community it is to have a vibrant impact to build stronger personal friendship and community relations the aims of the study to study and analyze the homogeneity culture of tenemie to preserve and promote its core identity to highlight how common culture impact nagas and the nation at large educate to enhance the marketing value of the traditional costumes distinctive cultural identity there are five distinctive cultural identity as mentioned earlier firstly the terrace cultivation cultivation is one of the main occupation of the people Tenemi are known as the pioneer in terrace cultivation. They are popularly addressed as babu, meaning sir or an officer. The villagers offer tribute with their laborious handiwork. They are they mainly grow two kinds of paddy grains, sticky and non-sticky rice. Rice is used as a staple food. non sticky rice is consumed daily by the people sticky rice is used mostly for brewing rice beer puff rice rice cake and many others zuto is called rice beer it is traditionally considered good for health and beauty it is also a part of family daily diet in many social gatherings and indigenous festivals people enjoy the intake of rice beer for merry making some people use it as medici medicine for good health and prolonged life since the olden days tenemi maintained a close affinity with traditional culture positive impact in the social and economic milieu upon the naga community wrestling One of the most popular sports among the Tenemi considered to be the fiercest sports played between the two percent. Among the Nagas, only Tenemi plays this sport. The youths wrestle to show off their prowess and masculine strength. In some disputes, it is organized to settle matters between persons, clans, and villages. It is also a sports event. 
used to bridge the gap of friendship and relationship through forgiveness amongst the villagers. Professional wrestlers are extended help and support from their families, clan, village, district, and even states. Winners brings laurels to the family and builds up their reputation. Amongst the many sporting events, wrestling involves community participations. Many people gather to cheer them up and watch the events. The women of the village prepares delicious foods and drinks for their loved ones and even enemies as a sign of reconciliation and reunion to end any bitterness or conflicts. Traditional attires. Only Tenimi menfolk wore gesuni, that is black kilt, and tzela headdress. There are two kinds of black kilt, nito, black plain kilt and commonly worn dressed. Kesani, black kilt designed with two to four lines of cowries, especially for social achievers and polygamy. Zala, headdress, it symbolizes a position of achievement and status. It carries identity and pride. Colorful feathers like cornbill feathers are used to adorn headdress. Headdresses has a variety of designs and sheds. Beer here were also used in the olden days to make headdress. At present, synthetic dyes are used. Hornbill feathers are only used by Rami Kefemie, meaning hero hunter, War warriors or the hosts of the Feast of Merit are only entitled to wear hornbill feathers. Traditional village gate called Karu. Village Karu was set up by selecting the trees ritually, cut, pulled by the whole community in the full traditional attires and constructed by the menfolk of the village. Karu is for security reasons due to war and head hunting among villages in the olden days. This is the only entry and exit gate to the village, opened and closed by the village watchmen and youths on a rotational basis who strictly guards the village. Dead bodies are forbidden to pass through the gate. Motif of human heads signifies fertility of the village. Bull heads stands for livestock prosperity. Pedigree symbolizes availability of ample food in the village. Images of warriors with a spear represents bravery and courage. Thank you. Uh, thank you, dear research scholar for your presentation on Tenimia community. Very nice, it's really uh, very nice to know about this community. So now let us proceed and we have uh, our last uh, participant, uh, Miss Catherine from uh, St. Joseph College, Tamil Nadu. I hope the scholar is connected with us. Uh, yes, sir, I'm connected, sir. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead, introduce yourself uh, and yeah. go ahead with your presentation. Yes, sir. One second, my. Catherine, I hope you are still with us. Uh, yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm just trying to present my paper. All right. No problem. Please take your time. Oh, yes, sir. One second. Uh, but my screen. 
Yes, it is visible. Is it visible, sir? Can I start, sir? Yeah, that's fine. Hello? Please go ahead. Okay, yeah, sir. you may start, okay, please. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I'm, I'm Mother Catherine, this is a scholar from Lotus College of Anonymous. Tamil Nadu. I'm glad to have an honorable person for my presentation. Think twice before you speak, because your words and influence will plant the seed of either success or failure in the mind of another, says Napoleon Hill. Hope my presentation gives success. The title of my paper is Alienated Journey of Sophie Das in Neti Neti, Not This, Not This by Anjum Hassan. In simple words, cultural alienation is the feeling of loneliness between two cultures or left out in a particular culture where an individual expects so. The word originated from Latin. It means belonging to another or not fitting in. The theory was developed by Karl Marx in 1944 in his economic and philosophical scripts. So my paper will be focusing on alienation experienced by one of Anjum Hassan's characters from northeast to his south. At present, on April 12, 2021, the Hindu came with a result of an experiment by Indian Council of Social Science Research, that is ICSSR, says northeast India seem lessly an Indian's imagination of Chinese person. The study found that 78 percentage of people from the region who were interviewed believed that physical appearance was the most important reason to die against them. The study amid COVID-19 outbreak last year, people from the region faced an increase of acts of age and against them. Around 1,200 people, mostly women from Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Meghalaya, Manipur, Nahaland, and Tiripura, interviewed for research. Six percentage of people said that they face racial discrimination in metropolitan cities of India. The my book is Anjum Hassan, who is in Shilpa, Meghalaya, India. He is an Indian novel, story editor, poet, and an editor. Hassan was graduated from Eastern Hill University. Her works are in my head. She did Her works were shortlisted for the Literary Prize and Crossword Book Award. And it was long. Even for an Asian Literary Prize in 2008. Things that she had used in her work in general are cross culture, cultural alienation, cultural feminism, women and culture, identity crisis, art and literature, art and culture, and digital culture. Landscapes were much used, much given importance in her works, and she also used autobiographical elements. Make real her experience cultural in social life. So, from uh, Hassan's novel, so I'll just list out a few incidents where Sophie felt alienated throughout the novel. First one, no house. Sophie couldn't get a rented house. Five years old, Sophie moved from Shillong to work in a publishing house. The first door which we needed was a rental house. People thought that people didn't uh, that she was someone else, and they didn't give her give her a place to. They considered only her appearance, not her job or education. She went round and round looking out for a house, at least for a small room to be accommodated. No food in public. On the another day, when Sophie went to the pub with her boyfriend swarming. She saw a variety of food on, food placed on the table. She was just back 
uh, to the party hall from the restroom in two minutes, the food were missing. And the American guard says that uh, he doesn't know. So uh, lucky to taste the Bangalore state food. Next, the, accept the acceptance. Accept acceptance of her religion. Sophie is a person who believes in karma always. When she saved money, a grandson of a, a landlord from the street dog, the landlord did not utter a word. Of rather, he spoke ill, of, ill about her and of, about her religion. Next, denied knowledge. In the beginning, beginning chapters of the novel, Sophie's talent was being given importance, and as time went, she was not given importance for her knowledge. Then after music, uh, once when Swami, a boyfriend, took her to the music concert, uh, which shows Sophie was not uh, attached to it. She just came out and saw. She saw the singer um, was smoking and he was using uh, illegal words, the language, the bad language is out. But he was only concentrated on the men audience, not the women audience. So even there, uh, Sophie was neglected. And her interest reading books, she uh, convinced Swami to read books because she loved reading books. But people around her thought that she was, she was an alien who read books a lot. And her education was not considered at all because of their appearance. Effects of these hurts are the house, the house incident made her to become will, willful. First, the landlord didn't allow her, even allow her to uh, dry her underwear out outside the balcony so that people will see and it is a shame for himself. But this made Sophie to make it, to do it more and more. And even drinking was not allowed inside the compound, but due to this willfulness, Sophie did it a lot. And food made her to explore the complete uh, city, city. And the knowledge made her to become more angry over the people. Art and music create hesitation and disappointment. In which the illegal language which it was imposed on her made her to be ignorant and find fault with others. Her interest, her hobbies made her to fall into depression, and education was a great support for her. The scope for this novel will be psychological trauma, social problems, narratology, food and culture, eco criticism, women and culture, cultural feminism, identity crisis. Multiculturalism. There's no real end for this. It's just the place where I stop. Thank you all for your kind listening. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Thank you very much. Okay. So now let us uh, sum up what you have presented today. And before I sum it up, uh, let's you know see whether anyone has any questions or not for participants. If you have any question, you may raise your hand. Of course, your virtual hand. No question? All right, uh, dear participants, so let's come to my concluding remarks. First of all, what's the importance of culture in, in our life? I believe that uh, culture plays a very important role because it uh, defines our identity and individuality. Um, when I read uh, Miri Baraka's Vice One and uh, uh, Klein's Indian uh, Reservation, at that point in time, I realized that culture could be an integral part of one's life. Without culture, probably we cannot take this. This is something very important because if we believe that we can lead to some universal homogeneity, uh, then there are certain repercussions which we you know overlook or we are trying to turn a blind eye to those repercussions culture in simple words can be defined as acquired behavior and sometimes when we look at other cultures we keep in uh, view our culture and that's called self-referential um, criterion and it must not be done because every culture has its uh, roots uh, in specific, uh, uh, you know, socio-historical context. So we should not look upon, down upon any culture, uh, keeping in view our culture or keeping our culture at the center. That is ethnocentrism. For example, the idea of beauty uh, is, you know, uh, is different in different cultures. 
uh, so now let's uh, come to our first uh, participant's presentation. Madhavan spoke about uh, French Tamil translation studies. Um, he threw light on indirect translations, uh, uh, then direct translations. Uh, then he uh, told us about uh, some famous translators. His uh, presentation was divided into three parts: sport mechanism, role of awards. Um, uh, then he, uh, you know, also referred to relevance uh, of themes to the target society. The most important point uh, in his presentation was uh, related to the politics of translation. Uh, he has made it clear that a, a translator's ideology plays a very important role in the process of translation. He also referred to uh, Afsal Guru's the case. And uh, it's very interesting to know that Tamil texts are more political than social. Uh, all kudos, Marvin. And uh, the second presentation you, was uh, uh, by Dr. Pooja. She spoke about uh, Manju Kapoor's The Difficult Daughters. Of course, uh, her uh, focus was on cultural shit. She spoke about a uh, mother of 11 children. Uh, the novel is about um, educating uh, daughters uh, who, after you know, uh, they, they learn to think for themselves, uh, begin questioning the basic values and hypocrisy of the society. The society, uh, 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 the, the 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 story moves between the demands of modernity and uh, set traditions. Uh, uh, I believe, uh, you know, the, the 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 main point of this presentation is related to the commodification of women. And uh, you see that there are a number of works which have addressed this issue, but still this problem exists. And uh, we must uh, put in more efforts to deal with this issue uh, in an effective manner. So uh, well presented, uh, Dr. Puja. And uh, then uh, Dr. I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Krumoho uh, spoke about the cultural homogeneity of uh, the uh, Temia, uh, Temia community, and uh, she uh, uh, you know, drew our attention uh, to their 